let's get straight into this. So the first thing you have to ask yourself, or the first thing that you have to know, is the different types of programming languages. Now the reason why you need to know this is because there's a common fallacy that a lot of people believe, or a lot of people who don't haven't programmed before believe, and they think that if you know one language, if you want know one programming language, you can program for everything. And when I mean program for everything, I mean as in program for the iPhone, for the tablet, for for all these different platforms. And that's not the case. There is no one programming language that can program for everything. Nor is there one programming language that is the best. Those are those are two um, two misconceptions. It's important to understand that every programming language is different and some programming languages are better than others at performing um, tasks. So let me just uh, go quickly go through the different programming languages. We have high level programming languages such as C++ and Java. You probably haven't heard of them, them before if, you ha if you've never programmed. Don't worry about the names, you don't have to remember any of this. There's low level programming languages. These are programming languages which I don't think you need to learn unless you're really serious about programming and even though, even then this is, this is really far down the line. This is probably about um, two, three years down the line. Um, so I, I don't even think you need to know this as of yet. Low level programming languages. So uh, you know what what's really going to concern you or what really relates to you is high level programming languages. You have visual programming languages. So programming languages where you can actually make visual applications. Like you can actually make a graphical calculator or a graphical application that allows you to input some data and you get some data back. It's, it's very visual. You have database programming languages. So languages for programming database. A database is basically a um, a, a place where you can store information um, in a structured fashion and you can retrieve that information later on through database queries. Um, you have web program languages, and these are basically languages for programming web, the websites, or yeah. So you have languages for creating websites, but then you have the programming aspect where you actually program systems, web systems, whereby you can interact with the user, and this really links in with database programming. Say you have a, a website. So let's get an example like Amazon. Amazon has um, when you visit Amazon.com or .co.uk in your browser you you have the front where you have the search and you have you know all the products and stuff on the front page now that's a web programming aspect uh, or that's a language aspect that web page is built using a language um, HTML and elements of JavaScript etc but uh, what you have to understand is when you search Amazon has a database full of all of their products full of all of their users all sorts of details and you have to get that um, you have to get the front end, that's what I'm going to call this uh, web programming, the front end from what you see when you visit Amazon.co.uk to interact with the back end. The back end is basically the database. You have to get them to, to link together. And that's the reason why these two are interlinked, web programming and database programming. Um, I must admit, I found these, um, when I was learning these, these um, I haven't learned them all, obviously. No one learns every programming language. But I've learned a lot of web programming, database programming, and I must admit it's really fun once you get into it. It's nice being able to create websites, style them, make them look good, um, make them actually do things. That that comes when you actually um, create a database, do some database programming. It's, it's, really, it's really enjoyable. You really see results straight away. So that's quite fun. Anyways, you also have mobile development. Mobile development is when you make applications for either the Windows Phone, the iPhone, Android devices, etc., etc., and then you have scripting languages, and these are um, to so to best explain this, if you've ever used Microsoft Word or Excel before, sometimes you want them to do some thing like some functions, or you want them to perform some tasks, but to for for them to do that, you need to be able to either do it manually, so you have to look for the controls in Microsoft Word. So if you want to change the um, the, te the size of some text, you would highlight it and then you change the size. But if you want to do some things that are more complicated than that and automate them, then you can use what's known as scripting. Now, um, many of these applications like Microsoft Word offer a scripting language, and this allows you to write code within Microsoft Word and then um, run that code. So for example, um, Say I wanted to run a piece of code that checks, um, checks um, all of the headings on my web on my word document and formats them correctly or something along those lines. Um, I would do that using scripting by writing a few lines of code within Microsoft Word provided um, by Microsoft Word and the. Uh, 
the scripting language used by Microsoft Word is Visual Basic for applications. But obviously, um, other applications might have their own scripting languages. So um, that's another thing you need to bear in mind. So uh, those are the general list of program lang languages slash program languages. Okay, so these are my thoughts, and this is what I think you should start with. You should start with HTML. HTML is used to create web pages. It's really the the backbone. Once you learn HTML, you can build simple websites. But the reason why I said to learn at first, it's because that, sorry, it's because that once you you get that general feel and understanding of writing code. Of running that code, of finding errors in your code, you, you'll get that general feel and understanding at a really simple level with HTML, and you really need that flavor. HTML will give you that flavor. It's fairly easy. It's really it's it's easy to pick up. Um, you can apply it straight away. You can see results straight away. You can. It's it's a really easy language, and it will really give you that feel and understand that you need. Once you've learned HTML, you can learn JavaScript. The reason why I say to learn JavaScript is because I have another slide here. HTML really links in with JavaScript. Um, in that JavaScript allows you to be dynamic. So say, for example, you visit a website, you see a pop-up that comes up, hello, welcome to my website, or something like that, something along those lines. JavaScript was used to do that. Uh, most often it's JavaScript that's used to do that. Um, JavaScript is used by some of the um, many, many websites that we have out there. So I found this image on Google, um, Wikipedia actually. And it lists all the most famous websites that we have today. So Google, Facebook, YouTube, Yahoo, Live. And remember what I said about the front end when you visit the website, what you see. Um, they use HTML, of course, but they also use, as you can see, JavaScript, 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 JavaScript. JavaScript is used by these the biggest websites that we have today. So it's uh, JavaScript will really, so for the first thing we'll give, it's obviously it's more difficult than HTML. It links in with HTML. It's really popular. It's used by some of the best um, websites that we have today. Essentially, if you want to become a, um, a web developer, you need to know JavaScript. So it's, I'll put it in the O, um, in brackets, O as an optional, but JavaScript, I really think you should learn that, and that will come Complement your HTML knowledge as well. The next language that I think you should learn is Perl or Python. These are languages that are much more detailed that allow you to create real applications. Now, Python might be preferred. Perl is quite old, but it's really concise. It's it's not the easiest language to learn. It's not the easiest language to get um, to get to grips with. Python is so as a beginner. Um, if you want to take, if you want to, you know. Don't, if you don't want to get um, go too hard straight away after learning JavaScript, then Python's the best place to go. Python's really emphasized on simplicity and readability. So it's a really, again, it's, it's an easy language to pick up. There's so much documentation around it. It's becoming more and more popular for beginners to learn. And there's plenty and plenty of resources online for Python, especially on YouTube. So Python would be the next language. A Perl or Python is up to you. Um, then PHP. Now PHP is a web programming language. So remember when I said when you make websites using HTML and JavaScript, PHP allows you to be even more interactive because it allows you to connect to the database, uh, databases and uh, do some cool stuff with databases. It allows you to do some um, other cool things. Um, it's really for web programming and creating systems, uh, web systems that run online. Um, obviously, we know that Facebook uses PHP, Amazon also uses PHP, and there's many other um, shopping websites, especially e-commerce. E-commerce is online shopping. A lot of these websites definitely, most likely, use PHP. Then we have, um, that, that again is optional, but I must admit it's really fun, so I'd recommend it. And then I'd say move on to the high-level programming languages such as Java, C++, C, C Sharp. Um, you, you can interchange your order for these. I'd recommend to do Java first because it's the easiest out of these four, in my opinion. Java is basically, it, it will listen program language that allows you to create desktop applications, applications that run on multiple devices. Java is used to create Android applications. Java is used, as I said, to create desktop applications and other um, enterprise server applications as well. Java is really easy to pick up, but um, it's a really fun language when, as you start learning it. C++ is similar to Java. It's a bit more harder. C++ is really used for game programming, but also it's used to create visual applications just as Java. Um, C is really low level. So C is, it's, it really, C is one of the languages where you understand how a computer works. And uh, so 
with these languages here, you don't really get a flavor for what's inside the computer, what the CPU is doing, what memory is doing, etc., etc. C will give you that flavor because it's really low level. You're really interacting directly with the memory. So it's a bit harder, obviously, but um, it's a good language to learn. This is later on down the line, much later on down the line. And then the C sharp. C sharp is becoming more and more popular today to create, again, to create applications just as you would in Java and C++. So this is the route that I would take. Um, I yeah, this is a route that I would take. I'd recommend for anyone to take. Um, and then, th then again, then after all of that, I mean, obviously you might not get all of that. You might do bits and pieces of this and that. But and then you know, you might ask yourself the question. You might you might lose interest. And uh, this is where you have to ask yourself the question: What are you really interested in? Are you really interested in creating desktop applications? If you are, then go for this. Uh, just learn these languages here. Learn one of these, uh, the easy languages, and then move straight onto these ones. If you're only interested in web development, then learn HTML, JavaScript, do some PHP, a bit of Python. You you do those languages here. If you're into scripting, scripting is really limited. Then you would just learn some Visual Basic. Um, I haven't put that there because Visual basic is so e is ridiculously easily uh, easy um, and I don't think it's really good for your programming career in my opinion anyway and a lot of people might shout at me a lot of people especially programmers visual based programmers might be shouting at me at the screen right now but uh, that's the truth from my experience mobile development mobile development is um, iPhone Android Windows phone um, this is becoming uh, more and more popular um, especially mobile applications um, so if you want to learn mobile development I haven't got listed here but objective C um, is used for iPhone and Java here is used for um, Android devices and then we have C sharp here which is used for Windows phone now the one thing is you can't learn them all um, and um, I'd recommend that before you start any of this stuff here, any of these languages, you go to my beginning programming tutorial series. I've had a lot of good feedback on this series. It's about eight, nine, ten videos, some, somewhere around there, about 30 minutes. Um, Mac, uh, it will total up to 30 minutes. And in that, I, I go over all of the basic concepts behind programming that you really need to understand before you even start writing any code. Yeah. Um, so as I said, it's got a lot of attention, a lot of good feedback, and I'd really recommend that you go there first. So stay tuned. Um, I hope you've, I hope I've covered a lot in this video. Stay tuned. I love feedback. So I w if you, if you feel like um, I've missed something out, if you feel like um, you want, you want me to do more videos or anything like that, please just send me a message. Um, add a comment. Um, please do subscribe. It really helps. Um, I missed the S here, but please do subscribe for more videos um, from my channel, especially programming tutorials, which will be upcoming soon. Um, two S's there, accident. But yeah, um, yeah. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, and I'm just going to end on this last slide, which I've got here. This is based on 2013. I got this from CodeEvil.com. And this shows the most popular coding language of 2013. And as you can see, Python is the most popular. Um, it's becoming more and more popular because it's because it's because of its simplicity and readability. It's really appealing for new programmers. Then we have Java. Java is just portable. You can run Java on all sorts of devices, and so that th this really doesn't surprise me. But it just gives you a flavour of what's really popular and what's being used. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, thanks for watching, and bye bye.